Michael Soroka is back. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Also, make sure you check out my written work over at bravestoday.com. Make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback that you have for the podcast. Always enjoy hearing from you and hearing some of that feedback to try to make this the best podcast that it can be for you, the listener, and thanks for all your support. Thanks for all those who make Lockdown Braves your first listen every day, and let me know that in the comment section below. Thanks so much to all my everydayers out there, and happy, happy Memorial Day to you. Hopefully you're spending time with family and friends, remembering those who have sacrificed their lives for the freedom that we enjoy in this country. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors, a championship team. It's about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. So for parts that fit, head to eBay Motors and look for the green check mark. Stay in the game with eBay Guaranteed Fit. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. All right, on the podcast today, we're going to do our weekend recap, as we typically do on Monday, and our Miners Monday and we're going to talk about the return of Michael Soroka. It is official. They announced it Monday morning, just after, uh, just before I started recording this. He is back. It is official. He is back with the Atlanta Braves. He's going to make his season debut, his long-awaited return on Monday night in Oakland. Should be a lot of fun, a great way to end your Memorial Day, sitting down watching Michael Soroka return to a major league mound it's going to be emotional it's going to be exciting i can't wait to watch it and then talk about it afterwards me and grant will obviously talk about it on the postcast and then i'll talk about it again on tuesday's episode but going to be a lot of fun we'll preview that a little bit later in the episode but let's start with our weekend recap the braves get a four game series split against the phillies they go five and five on the homestand not ideal, and it's really just, you know, it's been up and down for the Braves here lately, and fortunately, nobody else really in the vision has done much to take advantage of that, but it's just been inconsistent in baseball, and we've really talked about this the last couple of weeks. You know, part of that is they've played really good competition over the last month, and that's going to happen when you play good competition. They're going to make you play some bad games, but, you know, this Braves team's really good, and they're still really good. I mean, the, one of the best records in all of baseball, but you just haven't seen them put complete games together as consistently as, as I would like as somebody who's being a, a harsh critic. Do I still think this team is really good? Do I still think they can win a World Series? Yes, but just when I'm putting on my you know critical glasses here and taking a step back and taking off my Braves colored glasses, I see a team that's been you know played a little bit inconsistent over the past months, which again, they played better competition and maybe that's part of it. But it just seems like it's the bullpen one game. It's the offense the next game. You know, very rarely has it been the starting pitching's fault. You know, maybe one game, it's defense. It just seems like they're not having a lot of complete games for this team that is so good and is so talented. And that makes it kind of frustrating because you want to see them go on one of those runs. And I think they will. But it just seems like there's one aspect in a game that really holds them back. And on so on Friday, it was the bullpen. 3-2 uh, lead going into the sixth inning. You take out Jared Schuster. You go to Joe Jimenez. You know, I talked about this on the postcast. I still thought that was the right move. It's just nobody you really you can trust coming out of that bullpen right now other than maybe Nick Anderson and Rysel Iglesias. Just not a lot of trust in those guys down there. But Jimenez have been throwing the ball better of late. So you go to Jimenez there with a couple of righties. He walks the two righties, gives up a hit to the lefty, and the lead is gone just like that. So, again, bullpen not executing. Litke also comes in in a 42-pitch inning, gives up two runs. Again, there's not a lot of guys down there who you can trust, and they're not stepping up at the moment. So, you know, Friday night you could squarely put on the bullpen as being the reason the Braves lost. Now, the bullpen overall, 
15th in ERA at 4.04, 12th in WHIP at 1.26. So a middle of the pack bullpen. I believe they can get better, but we need to see it. Need some guys to step up. And then on Saturday, offense is the issue. Only scored one run that came in the ninth inning, a home run by Sean Murphy, just four hits in the game and one walk. Now, to be fair, they were trying to hit Zach Wheeler in the middle of the afternoon game. The sun shines shining bright and his 97 mile per hour fastball. That's not an easy task for the best lineup in all of baseball. So I give them the offense a little bit of a pass and it's not like the Phillies were absolutely crushing the ball either. They were having trouble, you know, scoring runs as well. They only scored two. They got a couple of hits in the fifth inning that just found some holes. One that snuck down the first baseline. You know, if Matt Holson Olson's not holding a runner on over there, that's probably an easy ground out. So, you know, Phillies weren't, weren't lining up the scoreboard either on Saturday. So I give the offense a little bit of a pass there, but you still hope, that they can manage to score more than that over nine innings. Again, I mentioned starting pitching hasn't been the issue. You look at all the injuries in the rotation the Braves have had, but starting pitching is not the reason for the, the up and down that they've had here lately. You look at the starts this past week, Strider on Sunday, six innings, two earned. Morton on Saturday, five and a third, two earned. Schuster, five and two thirds, three earned. Dodd, five innings, four earned. Elder, six innings, one earned. Strider, six innings, Two earned. Morton, five innings, six earned. You go back to that first Strider game of the week. He only gave up two earned. He did give up four runs. That was a game that you could put on the defense. So, again, it's not starting pitching. That hasn't really been the issue other than the Morton game on Monday. Had a four-run lead early, and then Morton just gave it right back to him. Other than that, I mean, yeah, Dylan Dodd gave up four earned. He gave up that home run of the fifth inning that really kind of skewed his line a little bit. But bottom line, starting pitching hasn't been the issue for the Braves has been the other areas of the game. It's been defense has lost them a game this past week. Bullpen, lack of offense, you know, those are the areas that just pop up, you know, in a game here or there that seems to cost them. They're just not getting a complete game every time out there that's preventing them from really going on a, a good hot streak here. And I think it will come. I'm just pointing out the fact that that's been the case for over this past month for this team. And, you know, if that's some of the worst baseball this team plays all year, I think you take it with where the Braves are right now. Still a really good team. Like I said, one of the best records in baseball. But you look at the starter ERA, they're fifth in starter ERA at 3.42. That's tops in the National League. So, again, starting pitching has not been an issue for this Braves team this year. It's a couple of other areas of the game they really need to, to clean up. I think more specifically the bullpen and the defense, which I just, again, I did a whole episode on defense last week. You want to go back and give that a listen for me, it's. I think this team is better than what the stats say, but you still see it when you watch the games. There's just a play here or there that doesn't get made, and it ends up, you know, costing the Braves a, a run, perhaps a game. And really, you know, when we looked at it, it's third base, first base, and second base, and then Austin Riley goes out there and makes a couple of really nice plays. Again, if it's in his bubble, that's not the area or the issue with Austin Riley. It's the fact he just doesn't have a lot of range. But anything that he can get his glove to, Riley usually is going to make the play. Olsen's been uncharacteristic, uncharacteristically, uh, I don't want to say bad, but not good over there at, at first base. And then Ozzy is the one that's really had a big drop off this year. I don't know if the shift change has really messed with him or not, but uh, he's the one that really grades out really low. And even in the eye test, just doesn't look great. But everywhere else, I mean, right field uh, – I know Acuna rates really low, but I think he's still a positive defender. Saw the catch Michael Harris made on Sunday. He's a positive over there. Orlando Arcia is you know, slightly above average. He's not hurting you at shortstop. And any, even Eddie Rosario grades out well uh, defensive metric-wise in left field. So and you know what Sean Murphy does behind the plate. So if the guys you know on the corner can pick it up a little bit on the infield, and then Ozzy Albies, if he can pick up his defense, I still think it can be a really good defensive team. Uh, Spencer Strider on Sunday became the fastest player pitcher to reach 100 strikeouts in a season. He did it in 61 innings pitch. That just beat Jacob DeGrom's mark from 2021, who did it in 61 and two-thirds innings pitch. So last year, Spencer Strider became the fastest player to reach 200 strikeouts. Now he gets it at 100 strikeouts as well, just showing his dominance. 
Also, uh, this coming from Sarah Langs, who's great on Twitter. If you don't follow her, she comes out with a lot of great stats. She said Strider has six games this season with 20-plus whiffs. That swings and misses. Nobody else has more than three such outings, being DeGrom and Zach Wheeler. So Spencer Strider, I know maybe it wasn't the best month of May, at least by his standards, but he has still just been completely dominant on the mound, continuing to rack up the strikeouts. Matt Olson had a a big weekend, definitely a big Sunday, where he hit a couple of of mammoth shots over 445 feet. This also coming from Sarah Lang. She said Olson is the eighth player since 2015 when they started recording this data to hit two 445-plus foot home runs in the same game. Riley did it just a couple of days before. So those two big boppers at the top of the order have really gotten going. And you look at Matt Olson's slash line in May, 219, 350, 510. You look at the on on base and the slugging, those are great. But a lot of people focus on the batting average, and I get it. It's not great. And I know we're also not in a time where batting average really means a lot. But let me just tell you how – much that could change with just a couple of hits. You look at overall, he's actually cut down on his strikeouts a lot in the month of May. The walks have slightly gone up. Same amount of home runs, one less double. When you really look at his April and his May in comparison, we're talking about three hits, three singles, you know, just three singles even, how much of a difference that would make. If he just had three more hits in the month of May, he'd be hitting 250. And I think a lot of people would look at Matt Olson in a much different light. And I just think it's really crazy when you step back and look at it because I know a lot of people are down on Matt Olson. They want him to move out of the two hole. And I get it. He was struggling there for a couple of weeks, but you look at his month on a hole and really, if he just had three more hits when there's still some days left in this month and he's hitting close to 250 for the month, I think a lot of people look at it a little differently when you combine it with the 350 on base and the 500 slugging percentage. So Overall, I think it's still been a very solid month for Matt Olson. Cunha, a four-hit game to break out of his mini slump that he was in. He was just three for 21 in his last five games entering Sunday, and then he went four for five on Sundays, three singles and a triples. No home runs since that stretch of hitting one in four straight games that ended on May 17th. It has been a lot more of the hard-hit ground balls lately or seeing that launch angle you know, go back down. Again, I think the home runs will come and they'll come in bunches like we saw. And still, if he wants to, you know, just continue to, to smack balls through the left side of the infield, hit them extremely hard and get on base, that's fine. But you would like to see those home runs obviously start coming a little bit more frequently. Uh, but again, I think they'll come. No worry there. And good to see him get that four hit game on Sunday. Michael Harris, I mentioned the great catch he had also. Starting to come out of his slump slowly as well. He raised his average 17 points this past week, so hopefully signs of him breaking out. All right, next we're going to go through our Miners Monday update. I got a lot of things to talk about there, including a guy they drafted last year who is really starting to show the power down in Augusta, and David McKay we will discuss him next. Looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugar and calories, then you got to try the best tasting protein bar ever. That's built. Telling you, you got to try them. We tell you about them all the time on here. If you haven't tried them already, you're missing out. If you're like me, you want to make a healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise on the taste, then again, built bars are just for you. They taste so amazing. You won't think they're good for you. What makes built bars so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real dark chocolate. That's right, real dark chocolate and they come in unbelievable flavors like churro peanut butter brownie that's the one that gets me and my favorite cookies and cream i'm not sure how bill does it but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining amazing macros and what's even better is that they are healthy 130 calories four grams of sugar and a whopping 17 grams of protein and now you don't need to wait to get a box for years we've been talking about how you can go to built.com to order you a box which you still can but now you can go to Walmart and get some. You can go to Sam's Club and get a box as well. So if you're in need of some Built Bars, real quickly, just jump, run out to your store and grab some, or you can still go online. However you get them, make sure you go out and get your Built Bars today. Braves play the A's on Monday night at 8.07 p.m. Eastern. It's Michael 
Soroka making his return to the Atlanta Braves. Catch every pitch of the Braves' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Braves. And I'm sure we'll be talking about that all on tomorrow's podcast as we do our Talk O Tuesday segment. I'm sure it'll be all about Michael Soroka. Then we'll have our Stat of the Day Wednesday, Through the League Thursday, and Mailbag Friday as we do every week here on Locked On Braves. Well, let's get into our Monday segment, which is our Miners Monday recap. We'll start by looking at the top prospects in the Braves system, according to MLB Pipeline. Jared Schuster, obviously with Atlanta this past week, five and two-thirds, three hits, three walks, three earned, five strikeouts. That's now three really solid starts for Jared Schuster, who seems to be figuring it out at the big league level. Owen Murphy this past week, four innings, three hits, three walks, two earned, seven strikeouts. Good to see the punch outs there, but obviously three walks. Mixed in with that as well. Uh, not ideal for Owen Murphy, but overall he's having a really good season down there in Augusta. J.R. Ritchie still on the IL. No more update there, um, but not not great news, obviously, for J.R. Ritchie. A.J. smith Shaver, I uh, believe it's his second outing at AAA. Seven innings, four hits. Did walk three batters, just gave up two runs, and struck out eight. I mean, he has not missed a beat. Going up to AAA this season, I talked about him on the mailbag episode on Friday, was asked if I thought he would be up this year. I'm starting to think that he will. It may not be as a starter, but perhaps as a reliever later in the year, I could see him coming in and being a real weapon in the Braves' bullpen if they decide to go that route with him. Still haven't seen Cole Phillips this year or Darius Vines. Braden Shoemake, one for 18 this past week. It was a home run, two walks, five strikeouts. Now on the season, he's slashing 223, 271 with a 702 OPS. I was worried that maybe that long layoff while he sat on the Braves bench for two weeks might have hurt him. He looked okay when he first came back, but really slumping this past week. Spencer Swellenbach, two and two-thirds, three hits, one walk, one earn, four strikeouts. Obviously being very cautious with him as they bring him back this year, but a 193 ERA on the season, a 1.24 whip. 23 and a third innings, 20 strikeouts. So solid work for Spencer Schwellenbach as he makes his return from Tommy John surgery. Ambioris Tavares played one game at Augusta this past week and then was demoted to FCL, uh, the FCL league for the Braves. Really was needed. I mean, this year hitting 186, 287 with 73 strikeouts and 145 at bats with Augusta. Now, he's still just 19 years old, but a 44% strikeout rate at single A is not ideal. So sending him back to the FCL, hopefully uh, can, can work on some things there, maybe get some confidence back in him. He is a very smooth defender at shortstop, and I think he can stick there, but you can't strike out nearly 50% of the time at single A. Got to work on that, hopefully make some adjustments and come back up. Dylan Dodd. Uh, also started with Atlanta this past week, five innings, seven hits, one walk, four earned, three strikeouts. Only two options left with Dylan Dodd. He did get optioned after that game for Derek Rodriguez, who then got optioned for Michael Soroka. So Braves got to be careful there with Dylan Dodd now if they bring him back up. He only has a couple of options left this season. My guy Ignacio Alvarez, which I got his card this past week. I don't know if you can see it on the, the screen here. I did go out and get myself an Ignacio Alvarez card, and maybe I jinxed him because he was maybe had his worst week uh, of the season, two for 22, one double, eight strikeouts, and no walks for Ignacio Alvarez. That's a really strange line, a week for him to not see him draw a single walk. I hope they're not asking him to change his approach. I hope he's not feeling pressure to change his approach um, and be a different type of hitter, maybe show more power. Uh, the guy can hit, the guy can get on base, and I'm fine with that. If he wants to be a doubles guy that, you know, hits 30, 40 doubles with 10 to 15 home runs a year and bats close to 300, I, I'm fine with that. I think the Braves need that type of hitter, but just an unusual week for Nacho Alvarez. And then Michael Soroka uh, making his return to the Braves, to the big leagues on a Monday night, but did start a game. For Gwinnett this past week, six innings, two hits, did walk three batters, but just one earned run and eight strikeouts. And the biggest key here was 93 pitches. So they really stretched him out, really taking their time with Michael Soroka. I feel like he's ready to be up. As I mentioned, his last three starts now, he's looked really good. So 
Can't wait to see what he can do on Monday night. All right, quickly going through each level. Ed Gwinnett, Nick Solak, six for 20, three doubles, a home run, and four walks. Do want to mention Chad Pender, who was playing with Gwinnett, who the Braves had just brought in. He announced his retirement. Um, so I guess he retires at Gwinnett Striper. Um, but did want to mention that. Forrest Wall stole six bases this past week. He has 26 on the year. That's tied for the second most in Triple A. The Braves just, I mean, you're not using your bench player. If you just wanted to bring up a guy who could come in with some speed, I think you got to watch out for Forrest Wall later in the year, perhaps, as you get to the playoffs. You know, you put him on a postseason roster, a guy who can come in and steal you a base. I think Forrest Wall has some value in that on the bench. Joe Harvey for Gwinnett this past week, two and a third, no hits, no walks, five strikeouts. I know everybody's kind of looking for some potential bullpen arms to come up. 31-year-old uh, Harvey with Gwinnett this year, 12 and a third innings, just four hits allowed. He has walked six batters, but two earned runs and 13 strikeouts. And Grant Holmes as well, three games this past week, two and two-thirds innings, just one hit, no walk, no earn, four strikeouts. And on the season, he has a 2.19 ERA, a 1.09 whip, and 38 strikeouts in 24 and two-thirds innings. So Grant Holmes with that those flowing locks, you know, he's trying to work his way into the Braves' bullpen. I know Yoxel Rios, he just pitched an inning this week. I don't know if something going on with him, but another uh, guy that the Braves could potentially use in the bullpen at some point and give them a chance. At Mes Mississippi, Drew Lugbauer, 6 for 18, a double, three homers, seven RBI. The guy's just a, a home run machine down there. Cal Conley, an on-base machine, six hits and five walks. Domingo Robles, five innings, nine strikeouts. Scott Blewett. Five and a third, three hits, two walks, one earn, six strikeouts. And then Kyle Wilcox out of the bullpen, three innings, no hits, no walks, and six strikeouts. Down at Rome, Bryson Horn, eight for 25 with two doubles. Drake Baldwin, six for 21, a double, a home run, and three walks. He's having a really solid season down there. The Braves catching prospect they drafted last year. Keyshawn Ogan, seems like every night when I check the box score, he was doing something good at Rome. Six for 19, three doubles, seven walks two stolen bases this past week. Hayden Harris pitching side of things for Rome, three and two-thirds innings, a hit, no walk, no earn, five strikeouts and a save. And Daniel Martinez, seven innings, three hits, no walks, no earn, and five strikeouts. And then finally, at Augusta, David McCabe had a huge week, eight for 20, two doubles, four home runs, eight RBIs, a 1,500 OPS for the week. And on the season now, David McCabe slashing 267, 381, 493 with eight home runs, seven doubles, 47 strikeouts in 42 games. Braves drafted him because of his big power potential, and he's finally starting to display that. You'll wonder if a promotion for him could be coming soon, but he's really starting to heat up at Augusta and show off that power. EJ Exposito had a good week as well, four for 16, a double, two home runs, and five walks. And Cedric D. Grand Prix, I mention him almost every week on here now, Five and two-thirds, five hits, no walks, two earned, seven strikeouts on the season. 32 and a third innings, a 195 ERA, a 0 0.93 whip, seven walks to 40 strikeouts. So a name to really watch. I got to go back and watch one of his outings, see what kind of stuff he has because he's having a really good season there for Augusta. And then last one here because I wanted to say this name, Jan Carlos Lara. Hopefully I'm saying that right. Four innings, one hit, no walk, no earn, and six strikeouts. And as some of you may know, I was at the SEC baseball tournament this past week watching some of the top college prospects in the upcoming MLB draft. I want to just mention a couple of players who really caught my eye. Wyatt Langford, I think, is getting really close to actually being right there with Dylan Cruz. I think Cruz is probably still going to go number one as the top bat in the draft. But Wyatt Langford, you look at the numbers, I mean, you can make a case for him, the outfielder for Florida. Jack Moss for Texas A&M is a Brandon Nimmo lookalike. I mean, a left-handed swing. I mean, just kind of sprays the ball everywhere. I thought that was really interesting. Watch out for R.J. Austin. This is not somebody who's eligible, el eligible in this draft, but um, second baseman for Vanderbilt, one of the more impressive bats for me, really all season long. I watched him early on. He's a freshman, and I think he's really starting to come on here late in the season as well. Enrique Bradfield also for Vanderbilt, showing a little power. He's a top 15 um, draft pick, potential draft pick in the upcoming draft. Hurston Waldrop, I don't think he's going to fall in the 20s to the Braves, but I think he may have the second best stuff in this draft. Pitcher for Florida, Ty Floyd, pitcher for LSU. He's starting to pick things up at the right time. I still don't 
love him, at least not in the first two rounds. I do really like Brandon Sprout from Florida. I think he has four potential plus pitches. Uh, it's just sometimes you watch him and he looks like the best player, best pitcher in college baseball. Sometimes you watch him and he looks like a fifth starter. It's just really kind of hit or miss with Brandon Sprout, but he does have four really good pitches. And then Josh Rivera, out of all the college shortstops out there, you know, Joseph Gonzalez, Jacob Wilson are going to go at the top. Revere is a guy, if the Braves wanted to take him in the third round, if he falls there, I think he's somebody that might be shortstop ready pretty soon. Uh, so that's a name I'd look on, you know, maybe I, I love the defense. I know some people think maybe the arm strength isn't enough to stay at shortstop that he moves to second base, but the actions and everything look so smooth. He's really good defender. And then he's been great with the bat this year. So those are some names that caught my eye. The regionals are, are happening. Uh, this coming up weekend, if you are a baseball fan, you have to watch the NCAA regionals. In my mind, it's so much better than basketball's version of March Madness. It's games every day, a ton of walk-offs, a ton of upsets. It's really a lot of fun, and you get to watch a lot of these great prospects who are going to be coming up in the MLB draft. So that's my report from the SEC Baseball Tournament. Had a fun week there, as always. All right, next, we're going to preview Monday night's game, Michael Soroka makes his return to the mound. We'll talk about that next. All right, Monday night, it's the Atlanta Braves versus the Oakland Athletics. And the only bummer here is that the Braves had to play a Sunday night game, then travel to the West Coast to play a relatively early game for West Coast standards. I know it's still a little late for East Coast people, but that's a tough, tough travel schedule there. Hopefully they shipped out Michael Soroka early so that he could get over there, get adjusted and ready for this start. It's going to be Michael Soroka versus Paul Blackburn. Blackburn's making his first start of the year. He's coming off injury as well, but nothing like the injuries that Michael Soroka is coming off of. And I talked about this on the postcast a little bit. It's just going to be so great to see him come back on a big league mound after what he's gone through, you're talking about two Achilles surgeries. Some people do not come back from this. And a lot of people said he'll never come back from this and he won't be the same. And maybe he won't be the same. Maybe he's not that top of the rotation guy anymore. But the fact he's able to come back from this and all the work that he's had to put into it, it's going to be an emotional night. The guy hasn't pitched in a major league game in over a thousand days. He hasn't pitched in a big league game since August the 3rd of 2020 we've gone through a pandemic since then the guy hasn't pitched in a long time at this level and he's making the return to do what he loves all the hard work that he's put into this i hope fans can just enjoy the moment that you can put the results aside you know hopefully he doesn't get blasted in the first inning and they have to take him out you know i would love to see him get through four five innings but just the fact that he's back out there on a big league mound after what he's gone through is just remarkable. And hopefully Braves fans and those who will be in attendance there at that game can just enjoy that moment and enjoy what Michael Soroka has done to get back to this moment. It's going to be emotional. It's going to be great. I can't wait to see it. Now, as far as the results and the numbers, at the minor leagues this year, 4.33 ERA, a 1.33 whip, 35 and a third innings, 36 hits. He's given up a lot of hits, 11 walks, 35 strikeouts. But you look at his four starts in May, a 3.86 ERA, a 1.18 whip, 18 and two thirds innings, 15 hits, seven walks, 21 strikeouts. Again, as I mentioned, he's been much better his last three starts. And then you look at those four starts in May. And I think you'll take that version of Michael Soroka. I've tried to, to set the expectations here on this podcast of somebody who's a, a fourth or fifth starter. And if Soroka can be that for you, I mean, it's a huge win. But it's just a win for everybody that we get to see Michael Soroka pitch on a big league mound, see him make this return. As I said, it's going to be emotional. It's, it's going to be exciting. I, I hope we can somewhat put the results aside. Hopefully they're great. And hopefully they're really good and he get, he gets a good one under his belt. But put all that aside and just really, you know, rejoice with Soroka, who's able to get back and do what he loves after all that he's gone through 
injury wise the last couple of years. So looking forward to that Monday night again. We'll break it down on the postcast after the game. Then I'll have more about it on Tuesday's podcast. But hopefully you enjoy the game. Hopefully you enjoy your Memorial Day. The Braves play the A's Monday night at 8.07 p.m. Eastern. Again, Michael Soroka making his return to a big league mound. Catch every pitch of the Braves' hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Braves. That will do it for this episode of Locked on Braves. Thanks for making us your first listen of every day, and thanks for listening every day. If you are an everydayer, let me know down in the comment section below. Well, that will do it here. Make sure you follow us on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. Follow me at Shortstop Ball. Make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Locked On Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast, and we will talk to you next time.